Hey guys, you're here. Welcome to our echocardiography quiz. Let's get started. Click on the posterior mitral valve. The answer is right here. This is the posterior mitral valve. What is the benefit of the peak TR jet? A, evaluates RV compliance. B, evaluates pulmonary hypertension. C, evaluates RA pressure. Or is it D, evaluates central venous pressure? The answer is B, evaluates pulmonary hypertension. Based on the severity of this tricuspid regurgitation, what can be expected for the severity of mitral stenosis? A, mild, B, moderate, C, severe, or D, unable to determine with TRJ alone? Make sure you look at the entire image. For instance, the velocity is 4.2 meters per second. That's important to know. The answer is C, severe mitral stenosis. This is because blood flow will back up into the lungs and into the right side. This will cause pressure and volume to build up in the right ventricle causing this tricuspid regurgitation. What can be expected for the severity of pulmonic regurgitation? A, mild, B, moderate, C, severe, or D, unable to determine with MS severity alone? The mean gradient is 18 millimeters of mercury. That should be a big clue. The answer is C, severe. And just like before, this will cause pressure and volume to build up in the left atrium, causing blood flow to back up into the lungs, then causing pressure and volume to build up in the pulmonary artery and the right ventricle. This will cause an increase in severity of your pulmonary regurgitation. Which of the following describes this mitral Doppler? A, normal mitral valve. B, mild mitral valve stenosis. C, moderate mitral valve stenosis, or D, severe mitral valve stenosis. When you're grading the severity of mitral stenosis, the number you want to pay attention to is the mean peak gradient. This one is 15 millimeters of mercury, which is associated with severe mitral valve stenosis. Anything above a mean gradient of 10 millimeters of mercury is severe. You can say mean gradient or you can say mean peak gradient. How do you determine severe pulmonic regurgitation with spectral waveforms? A mid-systolic pulmonary valve closure, B, prolonged diastolic flow, C, early termination of diastolic flow, or D, absent A wave and mid-pulmonary notching.
The answer is C, early termination of diastolic flow. Question 133. Which is a sign of severe tricuspid regurgitation? A, systolic flow reversal in the hepatic vein. B, systolic flow reversal in the pulmonary vein. C, retrograde diastolic pulmonary artery flow. Or is it D, early systolic termination of the TR jet? The answer is A, systolic flow reversal in the hepatic vein. Question 134, which of the following represents severe aortic regurgitation? A, pressure half time greater than 1500 milliseconds. B, retrograde holodiastolic abdominal flow. C, antegrade systolic flow in the aortic arch. Or D, late closure of the mitral valve. The answer is B, retrograde holodiastolic abdominal flow. On your boards, they might say retrograde diastolic abdominal flow instead of retrograde holodiastolic abdominal flow. Either way, they're both the correct answer. So if it's just diastolic abdominal flow, choose that one. Question 135, which of the following causes pulmonary vein reversal? A, severe aortic stenosis. B, severe aortic regurgitation. C, severe tricuspid regurgitation, or D, severe mitral regurgitation. The answer is D, severe mitral regurgitation. What will happen to blood flow through the tricuspid valve during inspiration in a patient with constricted pericarditis? A, increase, B, decrease, C, unaffected, or D, completely stops? The answer is A, increase. Question 138. What will happen to blood flow through the mitral valve during inspiration in a patient with constrictive pericarditis? A, increase, B, decrease, C, unaffected, or D, completely stops? The answer is B, decrease. Now, if this question said, what will happen to blood flow through the mitral valve during expiration in a patient with constrictive pericarditis? And the answer would be increase. Patients with constrictive pericarditis, when they breathe in or during inspiration, blood flow will increase through the tricuspid valve and decrease through the mitral valve. Then during expiration, blood flow will decrease through the tricuspid valve and increase through the mitral valve. And that concludes all the questions for this video. Which of the following is associated with Friedreich ataxia? A, dilated cardiomyopathy, B, coarctation, C, VSD, or D, pulmonic stenosis?
The answer is A, dilated cardiomyopathy, and also hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is also associated. Question 70. Which of the following is related to glycogen storage disorders? A. Clipofail disease or syndrome. B. Neurofibromatosis. C. Neuromuscular. Or D. Pompe's disease. The answer is D, Pompe's disease. Which of the following is associated with mitochondrial disease? A, BSD, B, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, C, rhabdomyoma tumors, or D, bicuspid aortic valve? The answer is B, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and also dilated cardiomyopathy is associated with this disease. Question 75. During systole, A, the tricuspid valve opens, B, the aortic valve closes, C, the mitral valve closes, or D, the pulmonic valve closes. The answer is C, the mitral valve closes. And a helpful hint to these type of questions, anytime they mention just systole or just diastole, they're always referring to ventricular diastole or systole. If they're specifically asking for the atrial cycle, they will put in the question atrial systole or atrial diastole. Make sure you know what the heart's doing in systole and diastole. In systole, you know that the ventricles are squeezing, the semilunar valves are open, and the atrioventricular valves are closed while the atria are filling up. So the atria are in diastole, while the ventricles are in systole. And then in diastole, which is referring to ventricular diastole, the atrioventricular valves are open, and the semilunar valves are closed, and the atria are in systole. They're squeezing the blood into the ventricles. But during this cardiac cycle, we still call this diastole, even though the atria are squeezing and contracting. Question 76. What does the strain pattern demonstrate? A, normal strain. B, severe aortic stenosis. C, severe systemic hypertension. Or D, multiple ischemic regions. The answer is A, normal strain. Normal strain values are greater than or equal to negative 17, and it'll be in dark red. When measuring the pulmonary veins, you notice blunting of the S wave. Which of the following is the most likely cause? A, severe aortic regurgitation. B, severe pulmonary vein stenosis. C, grade one diastolic dysfunction. Or D, severe mitral regurgitation. The answer is D, severe mitral regurgitation. 
During an echocardiogram, you measure the left atrium, left ventricle, and pulmonary artery larger than normal values. Which of the following best describes the reason? A. Acute severe aortic regurgitation. B. Left to right PDA. C. Left to right PFO. Or D. Right to left VSD. The answer is B, left to right PDA. Acute severe aortic regurgitation will not dilate anything because nothing has had a chance to compensate. Which view will show the coronary sinus in the long axis view? A, peristernal long axis with anterior tilt. B, peristernal short axis at the basal level. C, apical two chamber view with anterior tilt or D, Apical four chamber with posterior tilt. The answer is D, apical four chamber with posterior tilt. From the left personal window, which of the following are you most likely to get accurate velocity measurements? A, pulmonary artery, B, mitral valve, C, aortic valve, or D, biplane symptoms? The answer is A, pulmonary artery. During which phase do the coronaries fill? A, late diastole, B, early diastole, C, early systole, or D, late systole? The answer is B, early diastole. If any of you have any questions about your upcoming echocardiography boards, feel free to reach out to me at ultrasoundboardview at gmail.com or you can personally text or call at 435-922-165. If you're looking for mock exams, go to my website, ultrasoundboardreview.com, ultrasoundboardreview. Click on the link here. Click on enter the pass zone. Scroll down, look for echocardiography mock exams, click on it, scroll down, and then click subscribe. If you're looking for more of a one-on-one -on -one echocardiography tutoring, go to the same page, scroll down until you see echocardiography tutoring right there, click on that, scroll down, and then click subscribe. If you're looking for an echocardiography workbook to study, go to the same page, scroll down, and the workbook is right here, click on that and click purchase, and then I will mail the book to you. I'm Jim with Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.